one, put a six. Reversal design one, six. All right, so here's reversal design two. Yes? Good question. The reason, the reason you're calling it a six and not a seven is because the downward trend in all of them? It, a, a seven would be everything was flat. Yep. And I, um, I'm really interested in the difference between four, five, and six. I get much less interested about the difference between six and seven, the difference between one and two. But you know all those scales. All right, here's reversal design two, put reversal design two. All right, level trend variability predicted. Level trend variability predicted, all right? Scale of one to six. I want you to think. Ready? One or a two. All right. The data are exactly predicted from the prior. It. I mean, this isn't a good example of the kid did not have a clue that you were even running a study. <laughs> All right. So I was doing a study based on whether I wore a tie or didn't wear a tie. Right? Turned out she didn't even know. Okay. Here you go. Do it a little bit faster. Level, trend, variability, observed, predicted. Level, trend, variability, observed, <coughs> predicted. Level, trend, variability, observed, predicted. Make a decision, scale of one to seven. All right. This is a little tricky. This would probably be a three or a two. <coughs> three or four, maybe. So very, very tight, yes, you get an effect. Very, very tight, yes, you get an effect. Very, very tight, yes, you get an effect, but in a contraindicated direction. So remember, three demonstrations of effect that are consistent with your logic model. So you got two demonstrations of effect that are consistent, one that's not. So by definition, you don't have three. But the, the real important thing is these data are actually going in the wrong direction. That's incredibly helpful. Frustrating, you don't graduate, you don't get to publish, you go to hell. But it's really <laughs> fascinating. Really fascinating. All right. Ready? Here you go. Come on, you can do this. Look at what I'm doing. I'm starting to change more things. Three, two, one, score it. Three, two, one. Notice that you take longer when they're a little bit odd. One demonstration of effect, second not, third yes. What the heck went on? I really think there's something there. Well, you should have kept running additional phases, cowboy. Come on. You don't have it. This is, this is a three or four again. Three, two, one, score. Five, four, three, two, ah, now. I want conflict. Come on, show me a little conflict. If you are focusing on level, then this does not show the effect. If you're focusing on trend, it is non-compliance. So if I were saying, what does this say for level? I would say it does not show an effect. If I would say, what does it show for trend? Come on, I'm predicting up here and I get this. I'm predicting down here and I get up there. The, this is a good example where I didn't do the phases quite long enough. This is probably a good example where the intervention worked, but I didn't run it long enough to be able to demonstrate the effects. You don't just change phases because you came to day seven. Okay, so evaluate for level, evaluate for trend. See how. Now look what I'm doing. I'm trying to make things, the easy ones were there, now I'm making it more complicated. Okay, so this is 
this is be what you would be looking at. So what you're looking at at your what you've got right now, six one two six two seven one for level, six for trend. All right. Now do the same thing with multiple baseline. A little bit faster. So here we go. Dependent variables, proportion of intervals with social disruption. So once again, the intervention is to decrease. So look at how we've got four different series. Remember, you're always going to develop, you're going to design based on four series. So look first at baseline, but now you've got to look at each baseline. All right, I want you to worry about that. What the heck are you doing intervening here when it's trending in the direction that you want? Okay, so five data points. So one demonstration, two demonstration, three demonstration, four maybe not as powerful, but it's still there. All right, so yeah, you're gonna be able to say, look, just in the future be a little bit careful. Right? And you could have, you need a good reason for that. All right, multiple baseline two. Okay, come on. All right, this is, now this is getting fun, isn't it? Because you look at the first one, get a change in variability, you get a change in slope. You get a change ultimately in, in level, but not an immediate one. But then you come to individual B, change in variability, but oh, golly gee, that's really predicted. Change in C, oh, change in D. So if we're looking really, it, this gets really complicated. If I use variability as my metric, Yes, I get a functional relation with respect to variability, but not with respect to arguing that I get a decrease in disruptive behavior, right? And look, part of what I'm doing is I'm giving you data, not, these are not real data, so I'm making these up. Make sense? Okay, here we go, a little baseline three. Look what I'm doing. I'm interspersing easy and difficult when you give a series of tasks, especially when you're trying to build fluency. You don't necessarily do everything exactly the same, but you don't give as much time for the easy ones. Okay, here we go. Remember, what, what did I put a big emphasis on with multiple baselines? Both horizontal and vertical, right? All right, now these, these actually are data that are not that dissimilar from a real study we ran. So we intervene, we look at that effect, but now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the rule? The rule is you don't intervene here until you get an effect there. Come on, you know better than that. Knock it off. All right, but I got an effect. Look at that. Look at, this is really low and that's really high. Okay, that's cute, that's cute. What about here? Well, there I got the effect. Yeah, you did. But remember, when you, you can't really do, when I do the vertical analysis here, when I do the vertical analysis there, I get nobody changed. Well, that, that, that's not what we want. And when I do the vertical analysis here, I get that everybody changed. That decreases the extent to which I can argue it's due to the independent variable. 